we're just gonna we're really gonna have some fun tonight because this is this is all like what happened in the past week and it, you can see this culture war here in here in the United States is it, I, I really do th- think this is how like a civil war slash separation is going to start you know I've been thinking about like how this is going to play out and it looks like um uh, one real possibility at this point is uh, illegal immigration, human capital being used, and demographics being used as a, as a form of warfare. Obviously, you saw with COVID, a lot of different lockdown measures were used as a form of warfare. We remember back in 2020, 2021, the Biden administration actually proposing this idea of having a vaccine passport for interstate travel. Like they, they actually proposed that. I believe it was September or October of 2021 that we're talking about this. And I, I, during that time, obviously, I covered it. And it was so shocking that they even proposed this. Uh, it, it, you know, it just boggled pe- people's minds. And it, But nobody was really talking about it except guys like me, right, on here on YouTube. Um, and, and it's kind of like they're really willing to go to that length. If, if they're able to get away with it. And of course, Biden wouldn't have been able to get away with that. So, you know, you had a Supreme Court in there that would have struck it down right away. Um, and and now we have this, and that would have been a form of warfare, you know, blockades and all of that. And, and, and that just would have ended up in a total fiasco with some states supporting the vaccine passport system to let trucks and supplies and, I mean, just commercial personal everything ship through the borders of each state i mean just imagine how much of a debacle that would have been it just would have been that would have sparked like a total revolution um yes sometimes i almost wish he did it you know this whole idea of accelerationism maybe it's the best way to go but now we have human capital being used as a form of warfare uh desantis you know shipping illegal immigrants to martha's vineyard right and and it just the reaction from the left and the progressives to this is priceless it's so hilarious because they all have their signs you know we support science we believe in climate change we we believe love is love you know that sign they all have it's the same sign black lives matter there's like five things it lists it's actually like 10 things or like it's just saying that like I believe the current thing, right? It's just saying uh, I am a, a, a non-playable character here in this control matrix, you know, <laughs> the, the new world order mind control matrix. I believe all of it. Like I do not question a thing. I do not have a mind of my, my own. So they all have those signs in Moth- Moth's Vineyard and they're really – in. Uh, an even higher class of people than than your typical progressive over there. You know, I've been to Martha's Vineyard once. It was a long time ago and real uppity rich place. Uh, you know, these are where all the Northeast elites, progressives, have their summer homes or summer mansions. Um, and, and it's really, really a high-end area. And so... Uh, what did DeSantis do? You know, he said, you know, you people, you believe, you know, uh, nobody is an illegal immigrant. You have your signs. All, all you know, Black Lives Matter. Uh, I, I gotta, I almost, I, sh- I feel like I should pull up that sign. I ha- I feel like, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I knew I had it somewhere. I knew it. In this house, we believe Black Lives Matter. Uh, women's rights are human rights. No human is illegal. Science is real. Love is love. Kindness is everything. These are all empty platitudes, right? They don't really uh, very surface level things. It's like, yeah, we all. I just, I'm not even gonna elaborate on it. But um, now it, you see this meme, which just it, it depicts it so well. Once DeSantis sent these illegals to Martha's Vineyard, they're like, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I know we said we believe all this, but we don't we don't actually want these people here. You know, all of a sudden it was like no trespassing signs came out, right? They just they sw- they're switching it up quite a bit. We're going to talk about it um here. Uh let's just check out this quick interview from one of the locals at Martha's Vineyard. 
th- these people are all the same. They really are. And it's it's like it's all these like upper class progressive snooty cosmopolitan white folks that have no clue what it's like to actually for the most part, you know, I'm not going to say like every single, you know, rich white progressive doesn't know what it's like to live a hard life, but 90% of them, right, are like these um just privileged people uh that uh have you know they 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 support all these progressive policies because they don't actually see the results of them in their ivory towers so check this out so what are the most difficult challenges right now? the difficult challenges are uh we have at some point in time they have to move to somewhere else right we we cannot we don't have the services to take care of 50 immigrants um and we, we certainly don't have housing. We're in a housing crisis as we are on this island, and so we, we don't we can't house everyone here that lives here and works here. We don't have housing for fifty more people. So what are the it's fifty people? people, guys. We're talking about fifty people, and this is the down season. It's it, all of these. Uh, Rich elitists are leaving their summer homes at the end of August, beginning of September. Okay, and so trust me. I have you ever been to like Lake George or Martha's Vineyard or any of these sort of uh, almost. There's a combination of like vacation tourism and you know the the rich folks with their summer homes, and they all leave right at this time. There. Are, like so many empty houses, empty mansions. Go find an Airbnb right now at Martha's Vineyard, and you'll find countless, likely countless places to to stay because they're all leaving their homes and they're putting them up for rent. You know, uh, you know, uh, temporary rent or or Airbnb or just like you know having their maids. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, but most of them are probably illegal immigrants anyway. Let's be honest. Having their maids like maintain the the property and all that while they're, you know, at their winter home in Florida or something, you know, whatever. So, this is uh, what you have, and they're complaining and saying we don't want these immigrants when, then you know they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. Of course, right? Of course. What do you expect? It's the most hilarious thing ever. These people are put on the spot, and. When push comes to shove, they're like, we don't want them. Actually, you know, yeah, we want them out of here. It's like, why can't just America as a whole have the same mentality as Martha's Vineyard? You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, man, you know, it's just crazy. It's like, it really is wild. It's clown world. But again, this is all engineered to a degree. You know, this is engineered to a degree. Uh, Ron DeSantis, though, really giving a middle finger to the establishment uh, by doing this at the same time. And, you know, we're moving more and more toward this this uh, atmosphere where I think these. it's really, really sad that our elites, both on the left and the right, are using human beings as pawns in this war. Because uh, I don't think this war is going to get hot. I think it's a, it, this is going to be a huge element of this war. These states, with the illegals sending them to other states as a form of warfare, um, and you know, it, these these progressive states will say they're sanctuary cities when push comes to shove, um, especially when their political reputation is on the line. Like if this was all done under the rug. They probably would accept the, these these migrants in Martha's Vineyard. I actually think they would, but because they have to grandstand and basically, uh, essentially say "orange man bad," because DeSantis does represent orange man in some ways. Although DeSantis is much more savvy, much more well spoken, and much more keen as to how the system actually operates, how the New World Order, like, Great Reset operates, the propaganda they use, and the, you know, the progressives, and what what their whole ideology is, and their tactics. He's very familiar with that, way more than Trump is. Trump sold out in so many ways. Not to say that DeSantis wouldn't, but, you know, like, if you hear DeSantis's rhetoric, you know, some of his, you know, 
thoughts on the on the vaccine and all of that, whereas Trump was pushing it, there is a contrast in certain ways that it seems like DeSantis is more anti-establishment and more of a fighter, or at least understands like where you know the base is coming from. When I say the base, I mean just people that are just very skeptical of this like Great Reset, like like no, we don't want to take the you know what the roll up your sleeve. We just don't want that, and we want someone who will go in there and fight. Regardless of what uh, you know, what the you know the the political correctness is, uh, so yeah, this is all being used now as a form of warfare. Do you think though? Do you think that these you know Massachusetts elites would uh, would send away these migrants if if it wasn't if it wasn't a form of warfare happening right now? They probably just quietly take them, but. You know, they have to grandstand in this. They have to say orange man bad when pushed into a corner. And they have to affirm their their um, their, their, their position, their, the side, their side in the culture war, right? Um, and it's all hypocritical. Massachusetts. Yeah, piece of... Crap. So let me just uh, let me just check the chat here. Oh, ho. all right. Let me see. Let me see. Mama's Vineyard. Let's see if I got any uh, supas. No supas, but uh, yeah, it is really funny, right, Jonathan? It's so funny. The fact that they. Oh man. It has to be it has to be the funniest story of the year. It really does. I, you know, the, the 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 immigrants get there and they're like they, they, their signs come down and they're like, "Okay, you know what? We don't have the resources to take care of these people." Meanwhile, on the border in Texas, Arizona, all these border states like they're they're taking in thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of these immigrants and trying to take care of them and doing what they can to like ship them back or bring them in or whatever they're doing i don't even know what they're doing down there half the time because it's so it's like half the time they they just let them in and by the way there's been countless stories of biden and that administration shipping doing exactly what desantis is doing you know they're they're trying to call him out for saying that this is you know an inhumane thing to do, but Biden's been doing the same thing, shipping them to Tennessee, shipping them to Arkansas, Arkansas in the past couple of years. There's, there's countless stories on that. Just go look it up. I didn't pull them up for this stream, but yeah, Biden's done the same thing. Um, and again, this is like a demographic warfare scenario. It's really crazy that they're they. This is what you know eventually. You could see this escalating to a point where they're kind of like, uh, you know, guns aren't being fired in this civil war. Instead, they're using illegal immigrants to to overwhelm the state um, welfare systems um, of, of enemy states. So, you know, red states will do it to blue states and blue states will do it to red states. And and then you'll have uh, gerrymandering and election uh, manipulations, all of these things. These are, this is the new war we're in, and then economic warfare. And I even think blockades eventually. Once you see these supply chain shortages really kick in, and and once you see the energy shortages really kick in, water shortages like in California, okay, and other states, natural disasters. And we're going to talk about that in a second, too. A lot of that is manipulated, engineered. Okay? You're going to see uh, the mask is going to come off. There won't be any more questions about whether or not we're at war. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. (laughs) All right. So what did um <laughs> what did the governor do of Massachusetts? 
Charlie Baker, what did he do? He called in the National Guard. And by, again, 50, 50 migrants, really. Massachusetts called in the National Guard on Friday to deal with a humanitarian crisis, quote unquote, that locals claim was set off by just 50 migrants being flown to Martha's Vineyard by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis before the deep blue state shifted the new arrivals to Cape Cod. Uh, three buses rolled up to St. Andrew Episcopal Church in Egertown. It's a nice place, by the way. You ever go to Egertown? Yeah, I've been to Martha's Vineyard a couple times. It's a nice place. Um, to take the most, uh, the mostly Venezuelan uh, migrants to the first leg of their journey from the elite island of uh, multi-million dollar mansions including a seven bedroom home owned by the former president Barack Obama and joint base camp uh, uh, base Cape Cod on the mi- the mainland well that's the other thing you know all of these climate change activists and uh, Democrat people like Barack Obama remember Al Gore with inconvenient truth and all of this them talking about how the shorelines are going to be totally covered by water. You know, how many times did they say that? How many times did they, were they alarmist on that? I remember Al Gore saying by 2014, he said this in like 2007, he said by 2014, like the ice caps will melt and Florida will be underwater and, you know, Martha's Vineyard and, ha- you know, a whole portion of the East Coast will be underwater um, and, you know, the re- the shorelines will recede into the, the mainland uh, or, or, yeah, recede into the mainland. So, um, you know, why is Barack Obama buying houses in Martha's Vineyard? Why does he own a summer home there when that's going to be underwater by like 2024, according to them, right? Yeah, because it's bullshit and they know it. These people are liars. Liars. The National Guard members will supplement work already underway by the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, Um, Baker's office said in a statement. You can see here. This is like 50 people, mind you. This is like probably like three families. I almost feel, I, I do feel bad for these people. They're being used as pawns in this war. It's just so sick. I mean, if you really think about it, like, like, the whole thing is really just, it really, it's like such a disregard for human life, you know? It's like, why, why do they even entice these people to come in in the first place with the welfare state and all that? And, and, you know, this property, you you know, they have like teams of like (laughs) NGOs, like encouraging people from the third world to come here. And and it's like, then they get here and then like nobody wants them and they just ship them around. It's all a, a control collapse of this country, guys. That's what this is. And they're using these people as pawns, right? It's really so sick. Um, so, yeah. Um, the average annual household income for residents of Martha's Vineyard is 132657 Dollars. Um, that's higher than the average in Del Rio, Texas. You mean to tell me that they don't have the resources, quote unquote, to deal with the 50 illegals, but tiny border towns are somehow equipped to deal with 5,000 every day? So, yeah. I mean, it's just BS, right? Like, 50 people isn't that much, and they're freak- they, they freaked out over this. He freaked out over it. They're still freaking out over it. And they think they won, by the way. They think this is a win. They think they spun this and that people, the average person that is like maybe in the middle on this whole thing, th- you know, they think they're, they're convincing them that, you know, DeSantis did a horrible thing. It's like, really? A horrible thing? Have you ever been to Martha's Vineyard? Check this out. It is a cruel, inhumane way of treating I t- I t- uh, people I mean, who are fleeing communism. 
uh, people who are, who are uh, and we're not just talking about... If I were an illegal coming into the U.S., Martha's Vineyard would be on the top of the list there of where I'd be wanting... I'd be like thanking DeSantis. Like, it's beautiful here. Thanks, buddy. You know? Like, I mean, Florida's nice too. Don't get me wrong, but... I mean, Martha's Vineyard is so quaint. Just go there, guys. I'm telling you. Check it out. And, and, you know, DeSantis did such a good thing. Like, think about it. It's like you guys, you guys want to have a good time. You want to, you want to live in a really nice place. Like I know you came here to America. You know you stay here in Florida. You'll end up in the ghetto of Miami or something, or Jacksonville, or you know, Tallahassee or whatever. No, no, no. How about this? We're gonna, we're gonna bring you to Martha's Vineyard, all right? And you're gonna really have a good time there. Hang out with the Obamas. You know, get some, get some sun on the beach. Go to Eggertown, do a little shopping. Get yourself a nice Gucci bag there. You know, it's going to be beautiful. It is a cruel, inhumane way of treating uh, people who are fleeing communism. Uh, people who are, who are uh, and we're not just talking about people, we're talking about children. We're talking about families uh, who were promised uh, a home, promised a job, put on a bus, and, uh, you know, driven to a place that they do not know. And it is a cruel thing to do. It is a cruel, inhumane way of treating uh, people who are fleeing. Yeah, communism. right. Yeah, right, dude. All right. <laughs> it's just, so the, yeah, the National Guard came and shipped them out. Like, we get it. Okay, that's the end of that. Like, it's not the end, though. It's really not. You're going to see more of this. You're going to see more of it than it's, um, this is the new war, boys. This is it. This is it. So I'm going to check the chat, see how y'all are doing, how y'all are doing. All right. Um, yeah, 24,000 were sent to some town in Texas around the same time, right? And then Martha's Vineyard's complaining about 50. It's just, it's, and, and they freak out and like make them leave. They call, they call in the military. I mean, they call in the National Guard. Like these people are like, I mean, snowflakes doesn't even begin to describe it. It's like, man. Like I'm just thinking if like, cause I live in New Hampshire and like, you know, if they brought 50 illegal immigrants here, I wouldn't be happy with it. But you know what? It wouldn't even be that big of a deal. It's 50 people. You know, I don't think people will be freaking out. <laughs> like, and this is this is why it's kind of like well wait a minute you people are supposed to be like all immigrants are welcome there's no such thing as an illegal all black lives matter all this stuff uh your signs out in the front yards you know let's go biden let's go obama whatever and you know uh, i i mean i can't i can't i, I feel like i'm kind of repeating myself here these people are just such hypocrites it's, it's just crazy. It's funny, though. It's funny just watching them be put on the spot and they totally, totally, like, show themselves to be basically, you know, what what we thought they were. Like, there is absolutely no questioning it now. And, um, you know, sometimes it's hard, it's hard to pinpoint some of this stuff because they'll hide behind, you know, avatars in the Internet saying that they care about you know, black and brown folks, uh, but when push comes to shove, look what they look what they do. Look what they do. They call in the national guard and ship them out. Okay, <laughs> it's like, uh, sorry, we don't want you here. You you gotta leave right now. We don't ha we can't take care of you here. Like that's you know you realize that's half the point of why like the border states that are somewhat red like texas that's half the reason why they don't want the illegals coming in they don't have the resources either you know you know like it it takes a lot of personnel to deal with that situation 